The current estimate is that about 32 million Americans have a food allergy. While it may seem straightforward for patients to avoid foods that they're allergic to, the truth is this is quite difficult and many reactions occur through unexpected or unknown exposures. The alpha-gal allergy is a food allergy to red meat that appears to form after bites from the Lone Star tick in the U.S. and other ticks globally. As of right now, we think that there are slightly over 34,000 people in the U.S. who have alpha-gal syndrome. On average, I see eight to 10 new patients a week. So this is like really unusual in terms of how someone gets sensitized to a food. And you know, the jury is still out. There's still a lot of research on exactly what is going on. But the thought is that the ticks contain some of the alpha-gal sugar in their saliva or within their body. And when they bite, they transfer some of that alpha-gal into the human being. And also they basically alert the human being's allergic immune system. So the immune system starts making more allergy antibodies. So anytime somebody eats a burger, steak, pork, barbecue, you are ingesting alpha-gal. And then it turns out there are also varying amounts of this alpha-gal sugar in some of the medications we use. Our research has kind of two main focuses. One involves how often does someone have to be bitten to develop the allergy? How long does the tick have to be on? Does the tick have to have had a blood meal before it bites? And we think by doing that over the long haul, we'll be able to help people understand what's the risk of developing AGS from one tick bite. It's probably quite small, but we'd like to be able to put a number on that. The other side of this is the research that's going on with our patients. We don't know if there's something particular about risk from the host genetically that make them susceptible. We also are investigating the idea that a blood type may be an influencer of who develops the syndrome as well. Ultimately, if we can understand what's going on with this food allergy, it might give us answers to what's going on with food allergy overall. Because there is a lot about food allergy that we just don't understand. And I think if we can figure that out with something as bizarre as alpha-gal allergy, we might get tools and strategies that we can then apply to conventional food allergies and even other illnesses to try to understand how to target those illnesses and create medications that can be helpful for people later on.